Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. It is that time of year again where I'm going to be doing um, tier ranking of the books that I read during a six month period of the year. Um, this video it's going to be the books that I read from July to December of 2022. Now I did read a total of 78 books over 2022 and the last six months I read um, I think 41 of those 78 books. The tier ranking that you can see right here on the screen, um, that is the tier ranking of the first six months, January through June of 2022. Figured I'd throw it up here as a little refresher of where we put um, the books that I read during the first six months. So take a good look. Um, that's how the tier ranking ended up then. And I think there was about 37 books um, that I read in the first six months. So we definitely read a few more in the second half of the year. So we're going to go ahead and flip on over. Um, these are the books that I read during the second half of the year and we are going to go through and tier rank them. Now if you haven't watched one of my tier ranking videos before, um, I will say I try not to spend too long on each book. I'll, I'll kind of like just mention my brief thoughts as to why I'm putting them where I'm putting them, but I don't really give a full-on synopsis or my my full thoughts on each book just because there are so many of them. So we are gonna jump right back in. Um, I'll go through the tiers again. They're the same as they have been the past three times that I've done this video. Um, I just like to keep them the same for consistency sake. Um, but the top tier is My Anxiety is Chronic, but this book is iconic. The second tier is that the book is a treasure. Third tier is It's Not You, It's Me, meaning it's not necessarily the book's fault why I didn't love it as much as like I could have. It's more of a personal preference. And then there's It's Not Me, It's You, meaning I didn't love the book as much as I could have because I think there's something fundamentally wrong with the book. Um, and then there's Who Are You Again? This is for the books that I know I read, but I don't really remember much about them. They were just very forgettable. And then there's the God No, Please No, Lowest Tier. Um, these are the books that I just absolutely did not like at all <laughs> when I read them. So these are in alphabetical order. They are not in the order that I read them. Um, it's just when they get loaded in into Tier Maker, they load in alphabetically. So the first book is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. And I think I'm going to put it in um, It's Not Me, It's You. I do think that this was like a decent thriller, but it was also pretty predictable what was going on. Um, I do think if you're brand new to thrillers, it would be good. Um, the writing is really beautiful. I did really enjoy Shay Earnshaw's writing, but yeah, I, I found this to be pretty predictable. Um, and because it was pretty predictable, it just hasn't really sat with me for very long. Um, and I... I'm kind of tempted to put it in Who Are You Again, um, but I do I do remember now that like I'm looking at it, kind of what went on, um, so I think I'm just going to keep it in It's Not Me, It's You. And then A Master of Gin, I think I'm going to put in It's Not You, It's Me. Um, this is kind of a steampunk fantasy mystery, and while I enjoyed it, had a lot of fun with it, I thought it was clever, I thought that Clark had a lot to say and integrated those things that he wanted to say really well in the book. Um, I feel like, for whatever reason, I just couldn't get into the book, but I couldn't really pinpoint anything that I didn't particularly like about it, so I think it's just a me thing. Oz Well by Mona Awad. Um, I really enjoyed this. I didn't enjoy it as much as Bunny, which I think, um, I think I'm going to put in It's Not You, It's Me as well. Um, I think that Awad's writing style just, like, is phenomenal as always. Um, I did think that it was very interesting. It just didn't stick with me as much as her other book, Bunny, has. Bunny just kind of, like, lives in my head rent-free at this one. It's a little more forgettable, yet I do, you know, remember it. So I'm not going to put in put it in Who Are You Again, but I'm going to stick it here. Babel, iconic, absolutely iconic. You've probably already seen my um, top 10 of 2022, and of course this made it in there. I think Quan just 
um, didn't pull any punches yet again. Um, she just had some phenomenal things to say about um, white institutions that thrive off of crushing other um, cultures and taking from other cultures as well as just kind of forcing a person to look at an institution that they benefit from and how that impacts everybody else around them. Um, just a beautiful dark academia book that I think has a lot to say about academia in general as well as colonialism. Beautiful nightmares. I'm gonna put in Who Are You Again, um, <laughs> and I love this series. This is the fourth book in the Fortuna Sworn series, and this is my least favorite book of the series. Um, part of the reason may be because I had COVID while I was reading it, but I just was bored through a lot of it. I also found some of the stuff that like happened at the very end to be very predictable. I was It was very obvious that that was the direction the book was going in, yet it presented it as if it was supposed to be a surprise, and I didn't really find it very surprising. Um, because of the pacing and everything, I just was not into it, and I, I'm i gonna be honest, it, it was kind of forgettable for me, unfortunately. Now, I do have a few nonfictions scattered throughout here, the first of which is Dark Archives, which I found to be absolutely iconic. Again, if you watched my top 10, this did make an appearance in my nonfiction mentions. Um, I found this to be absolutely Absolutely fascinating and you're, if you're into like a niche kind of historical scientific topic that such as books bound in human skin I would highly recommend it it is rather short um, but there is a lot of information in there and I found it organized very well and just kind of the whole topic of research to be super fascinating. And then Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford. I'm gonna put in Who Are You Again. This is a super short book. I remember being disappointed by it when I read it and I also remember feeling like not a lot happened which is fine because I do like books like that where not a lot happened but like thinking back on it I I don't really remember much. I just remember being disappointed and not enjoying it the way I wanted it to wanted to enjoy it. I also remember kind of like the little twist or reveal that happened. It was again, I found it to be very predictable. I, I guessed it pretty early on. I couldn't tell if it was something that you as the reader are supposed to be able to guess or it's just supposed to be surprising to the characters, but I don't know, I just, I was not very impressed by it, and it found, I found it to be pretty forgettable. Forgery of Roses. This is like a YA fantasy mystery novel, and I'm gonna put It's Not Me, It's You. I had a good time while I was reading it. I liked the magic side of it. I did like the mystery element. Um, I thought that that was really well done. However, I do think that there was some like plot holes in there that I caught and couldn't figure out how they were supposed to be answered. Um, one of them in particular was kind of an inconsistency, um, but I do think for a YA mystery. I think that it was pretty decent and overall like I was entertained by it. All right, Fortune Favors the Dead is going to be our first treasure. This is like a 1940s noir murder mystery novel. I had a lot of fun with the main characters. I really enjoyed it. I found the murder mystery to be really complex and very well like woven together. I liked how complex the answer was while like the murderer was kind of predictable. The reason behind their intentions was not predictable at all and was very complex and I really enjoyed that. Like I said, I also really just loved our main characters that we follow, our detectives, and I'm really looking forward to continuing that series. And then we have Gideon the Ninth, and I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to put Gideon, uh, Harrow, and Nona all up here. Iconic. Absolutely iconic. Again, if you watched my top ten, you know that I couldn't just pick one of these to list. I had to pick all three. Um, this is a sci-fi fantasy series. There is one more book coming out within either the next year or two, um, and just Thames and Muir's brain is amazing, and I I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about this. This, this series is hilarious. It's absolutely genius, and I highly, highly recommend picking it up if you're interested in kind of a very puzzly like 
book. And then Her Majesty's Royal Covenant, it's going in, it's not you, it's me. I enjoyed this book quite a lot. It took a turn that I wasn't expecting. It's a fantasy novel but it's like set in our real world and it feels much more like a drama with fantasy aspects than necessarily just a, a fantasy novel. We're really focused around um, these five friends in their 30s and kind of how they are maneuvering through life in their 30s and I had a lot of fun with it. I just really did not jive with Dawson's writing style at all. It was not for me. Um, it graded on me um, and so it really hampered my enjoyment of it but the book and the story itself I did really enjoy. So um, Hood Feminism, I'm gonna put in a treasure. I found this to be really well written. Um, it's basically about the intersectionalism of race and gender and I thought that it was really well done. It really covered a broad range of topics and how they are impacted by the intersectionalism of race and gender. Um, if you remember, I'm gonna flip back real fast to my tier ranking from the first um, six months. If you remember Bad Feminist, I kind of explained that there was like aspects that I felt didn't feel cohesive within the book. Hood Feminism took those aspects and actually like really fleshed them out and explained it and made a lot of things make a lot more sense um, as to how they relate back to race and gender and so I just really thought this was really well done. And this is Howl's Moving Castle. This is the Folio Society um, copy or edition of it and I'm gonna put it in a treasure. I really really enjoyed this. This is a great middle grade story um, and this is coming from somebody who does not read middle grade. Um, I'm not a big middle grade fan but I do really love Howl's Moving Castle the movie. It's my like one of my all-time favorite movies and so I was really excited to read this book. It's just as whimsical um, and just as charming as the movie just in very different ways. The plot itself is fairly different than the movie um, but I did have have a lot of fun with it and I really loved Sophie's character even more in the book um, than I did in the movie and I and I love her in the movie too. Uh, and it ends with us, one of the first of the three Colleen Hoover books that are in here um, that I read for a Colleen Hoover vlog. Um, this is going in, it's not me, it's you. Um, I hated the second or I hated the first half of this book. The second half felt like a completely different book and while I really enjoyed what Hoover had to say in the second half and how it put a lot of things that happened in the first half into perspective, I really think that first half could have been a lot better. And then Jawbone, I'm going to put in It's Not You, It's Me because I enjoyed this horror novel. I thought that it was really well done. It's also just a very interesting novel, how it's set up and how like the stylistic choices that are in there. However, there were parts of it that I feel like got lost on me. I felt like I just didn't quite understand what was going on and I think that's a me thing. Um, but overall I found this to be a, a super interesting, um, rather creepy at times horror novel. Night of the Mannequins, a treasure. It is. It was so close to being iconic um, and I think it's just the short the, the, the length, how short this book was, that made it so that it didn't quite worm its way into my brain as I wanted it to. However, that being said, I also think it was the perfect length. Um, this one is a book that I feel like you should go into it not reading any of the synopses. And if you really want to know what it's about, um, all you need to know is that it's about a group of high school friends who decide to pull a prank using a mannequin in a movie theater and it goes horribly wrong. And that is all you need to know. This book is surprising um, in the direction that it goes. Um, it's very unexpected. However, I do think that the synopses on the back of the book and on Goodreads spoil that left turn that it rapidly takes. But I really had a lot of fun with this. I think Jones does a great job of writing this very casual narrator voice that typically I hate casual narrations, 
but Jones just pulls it off really, really well. And then Nothing But Black and Teeth, I had a lot of fun with this. And I want to put it here because I don't think that it deserves to be as low as it is. But I do think that like the reason why I didn't as enjoy it as much as I wanted to is because it was too short, which means it's something that is like the book itself. I think it was way too short. I think we really should have focused more on like the character interactions. There was a lot that I think could have been done with the complex relationships that a lot of these characters had that then added into the tension and the horror that happened. Um, but I think that it was very campy. It was very fun otherwise and I think if you're looking for kind of a campy horror novella I think Nothing But Black and Teeth is a really good one. Princess is behaving badly. I'm gonna put in Who Are You again. Um, I found this to be super dry, super boring. Um, I also just I could not stay focused when I was listening to this audiobook um, and that sucked because it was something that I was super interested in. It was about basically a bunch of mini biographies about these kind of royal women from all through the ages all over the world and I just could not focus on it at all. I think part of it that I didn't like was how brief the biographies were, but I also just thought that it was very dry as well. And then Ruination. I'm really sad. Um, I received a copy of this from the publisher and I was super excited about it because I've played League of Legends. I played a lot in college. This is a book about, like, it's a, it's kind of a, a, a lore book following some of the characters in the game. Um, and I did not like this at all. I like, the only thing that saved me was the fact that I recognized the characters and I, like, cared about them because they're part of the game that I really love, but otherwise I thought that the pacing was horribly fast, um, not enough detail was spent on things, I didn't care about the relationships between characters, yeah, I just, I didn't have fun with this, I thought it was really boring. A sign here, I'm gonna put this... I'm gonna actually put this in a treasure. I haven't really talked about it a lot. I mean, I only read it like, I don't know, maybe in November, but I had a lot of fun with this. I thought it was really good. I was surprised that it made me cry. Um, this, I think you need to go into it realizing it's less of like a supernatural paranormal story and it's more you're focused on the intricate relationships like of this family and how all of these different characters tick, like what makes them tick, how they go about making decisions. It's very much a character study and like a study on this family and their relationships and everything. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with it. I did really like the paranormal supernatural aspect of like our employee in hell that we were following. Sundial, I was disappointed in this book. And to be honest, I kind of just don't remember it very much because I was so disappointed in it. it like, it doesn't, it's not quite here. Uh, there was like some sort of weird disconnect I felt between the reader and the characters. And there was also, again, some like annoying predictability that I, I wanted more jarring twists and they just weren't there. And because of that, I, I was bored. I remember being kind of bored and the fact that I wasn't entertained, I just have forgotten about it. Um, Devil in the White City, I'm actually- I'm gonna put this in It's Not Me, It's You. I do think that this is a pretty good nonfiction novel about, like, the turn of the century, the Chicago World's Fair, and H.H. H. Holmes. Um, I found there to be a lot of pretty good, interesting information. However, it really dragged on and it was quite dry, and I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if Larson's writing style was more engaging and if there was like a more even distribution of time spent on H.H. H. Holmes and time spent on the construction of the World's Fair, I felt like an unequal amount of time was spent on the architecture of the World's Fair, which I think if you're looking for something like that, this is good, but with how it was advertised, I just was kind of disappointed in it.
The Fall of Babel is going in a treasure. This is the final book in the Books of Babel series. Um, the second book did make it on my top 10 list, and while I really enjoyed this one, it didn't quite make it into the iconic um, section. I found it to be a bit slow in parts, and I also still just don't quite know how I feel about the ending of this book. Uh, I feel like the ending fits how wild the story itself is, but I still felt like it was almost too wacky for me, but I, at the same time, I liked it. I don't know, I have very mixed feelings, but overall I did enjoy the book. The girls are also nice here. Uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in, it's not you, it's me. Um, I didn't think this is that bad. I, it, it did what I wanted it to do, it's just not, like, as phenomenal as it could have been. Um, there really wasn't anything wrong with it. It's basically this, like, thriller of, like, rich, catty girls, and I like the, like, rich, catty girl drama. Like, I forgot that that's, like, a guilty pleasure of mine, but it was just okay. It was okay. It was entertaining. It did what I needed it to do, but it wasn't anything crazy. Oh, and then The Hod King is the third book in the Books of Babel. So I'm actually just going to put that right here with The Fall of Babel. Again, I still really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Still just as whimsical as um, I wanted it to be. I also really enjoyed the decision of how the book was organized, where you follow, instead of following multiple characters, like, and you just flip chapters, and you follow the timeline consistently, this one was interesting because you follow one character and the whole timeline, and then you restart from the beginning, and you follow a second character through the same timeline, but you get more information. Um, and that happened like three or four times, and I thought that it was a fun decision. I know some people didn't like it, but I liked it. The Inugami Curse. I'm gonna put It's Not Me, It's You. Um, I liked the mystery behind the story. However, I feel like it could have been cleaned up a lot in the writing. The writing was super dry. That may have been partially because it is a translated work, but I also felt that this rehashed details of like the crime scene and like the detective, all the details that de the detectives were collecting, rehashed them like over and over and over again, where it almost felt like you could cut out like 50 pages of the book and it wouldn't make a difference because it was just repeating everything that we already talked about like multiple times. Um, and it just frustrated me. The love hypothesis. I'm putting this in a treasure. I had a lot of fun with this. This is just a cute little rom-com. Um, I loved the banter and the chemistry between, get it, chemistry, uh, between, well, I guess they're biologists, but whatever, same thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not the same thing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I loved the banter and the chemistry between our two characters. I found this to be a fun story. Um, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. The Maid, um, I'm gonna put it in, it's not you, it's me. I think, so this is described as a murder mystery. However, we're following a main character that doesn't pick up on social cues very well or like understand social dynamics very well and so because of that you as the reader kind of know already what happened in the murder scene and I feel like it's less of a murder mystery for you as the reader as it, than it is for the characters to try to figure it out but it's more you're just rooting for this main character to get out of this sticky situation that she's in but also discover who's truly got her back and like have her find her circle of people um and so I did like it for that reason I don't want to put it in it's not me it's you because I still think that the murder mystery was interesting and there is a pretty big twist at the end that took me by surprise that like definitely flipped it on its head but for the most part you do get understand most of what's going on. The Roanoke Girls, this is gonna go and it's not you, it's me again. I did really enjoy this book. I actually might put this down here. I don't know. We're kind of waffling between the two because part of it is it's described as a thriller but like the really shocking like explanation kind of of what's going on is revealed within the first 50 pages and after that the rest of the book is mostly like a 
study of like this girl's grief and her trying to like come to terms with what's been happening in her family and what's happened to the previous women in her family and her trying to recognize kind of the decisions that she made and the repercussions as well as just like things that are completely out of her hand um and how those have impacted her and the rest of her family it's kind of waffling between the two here i did really enjoy it but i think i'm gonna put it here actually the shape of darkness i'm gonna put in it's not you it's me i think that this is a really well done horror novel however i found it to be really slow and i had a hard time really falling into this story as much as i did the silent companions which i'm putting as a treasure both of these are by laura purcell this one i was like hooked almost from the very beginning and i had a hard time putting it down whenever i needed to um it was definitely very very creepy at some point we start following two different timelines and i found both timelines equally compelling and fascinating to read from um yeah i just definitely liked this one a lot more than the shape of darkness and then things have gotten worse since we last spoke. I'm putting it in It's Not You, It's Me. This this is a collection. This is two novellas and one short story. And while they were way too much for me, way too disturbing for me, I think that they were really well done. And I think if you're looking for an extremely disturbing novella, the title novella of this collection fits the bill. Yeah, that was too, it's too much for me. This thing between us is going in iconic. I really, really enjoyed this. This is this has got like a weird combination of like social surveillance horror, haunted house horror, cosmic horror. Um, there's also a big discussion of grief. Um, I just found it super, super fascinating. Again, it, it's I got a more casual voice to it, like narration voice, but it was one that I thought was done really well. The entire story is basically a letter that our narrator is writing to his dead wife, and I found it to be super well done. This was just one of the creepiest haunt house stories that I've ever read. Um, and yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed this. Tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, I'm putting in a treasure. I had a lot of fun with this. I thought that it, um, was really impactful. It's a very kind of roller coaster of a novel. It's one that is really, really focused on the relationships between characters. Um, it's also one that reminded me almost of a more melancholic Wes Anderson film. Uh, yeah, I just found it to be really unique and interesting, and it was just a very interesting exploration of the idea of a different type of love story. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Tripping Arcadia, I kind of want to put it down here and it's not me, it's you. I found that it took a long time. It almost felt like Mayquest didn't quite get their footing under them in this story until about halfway through. Um, I didn't start caring about the characters until halfway through. I just, I really struggled with this one. I almost kind of want to put it down here, to be honest, in Who Are You Again? I think I'm going to, because thinking back on it, I really, it's a pretty forgettable novel for me, which I was sad about, because first of all, the cover is gorgeous, and second of all, I was really excited about this idea of like a revenge gothic tale, but it just didn't pan out the way that I wanted it to. I'll we love god no please no i hated this hated it i could not root you could not pay me to root for the main characters in this story um toxic relationship boring flat characters there was like no substance to the plot yeah i did not like this verity i'm gonna actually put this in it's not me it's you i think if this is your first ever thriller novel or maybe like you've only ever you've never really watched I, I don't know I think it's a very good novel I think it's a good thriller novel for like somebody who's very new to the thriller genre in general but like if you're not new you're probably gonna be bored I was like mildly entertained throughout the entirety and wasn't like shocked until the last two chapters but the last two chapters did get me they did surprise me but, like, I think that, again, characters were kind of flat. There was also some inconsistencies in characters, as well as, like, the writing. Hoover's writing is just very... 
plain and boring to me. Vespertine is going in a treasure. I love Margaret Rogerson. I love the atmosphere of each of her stories. Um, this book is no different. Still has that very, like, nostalgic fairy tale feel to it. It's definitely more, much more of an adventurous story. Um, this is one that actually does not have a romance in it as opposed to her other two which are quite focused on the romance but I think that Rogerson was able to do it very well and I still found it just as fun um, and I just really loved our main characters as well. And then the final book, You Let Me In, Iconic. Oh, we'll put it after. Iconic. Um, this, again, was another one that showed up in my top 10. Um, I really loved this. Bruce's writing style is just beautifully haunting. Um, this is one that really makes you think about things and what you're reading um, and kind of a character's mindset as well. Um, it's very earthy feeling um, and very horrific as well. It's very, very dark, but I, I think that it's a very powerful book as well, and I just really, really loved this one. So this is my tier ranking of July through December of 2022, the books that I read July through December. Um, again, this is another one I feel like we have a pretty good split here, pretty healthy mix of things that I loved, things that I didn't love. I'll flip back real fast to the first half of the year. Yeah, I feel like a pretty similar split, first half of the year, second half of the year. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. But thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you've read any of these books or you're looking to read any of them, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. If you would move any of these books to a different tier ranking, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. But again, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing if you haven't already. But as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.